Okay, in this uh, video we want to discuss the uh, concepts presented in section 1-3 uh, dealing with uh, segments and rays and parallels, parallel lines and parallel planes. And of course, <coughs> the picture we see here are effectively what um, we would uh, say are parallel lines, uh, the bars containing the, the uh, the gates of the fencing here are parallel. Now you say, well, parallel do not meet. Well, no, they don't. But the, we have the illusion of these parallels meeting because what we're trying to do is depict a uh, three-dimensional uh, image on a two-dimensional surface. So that's the point where they appear to meet is something called par the, uh, the uh, uh, vanishing point, which is... Uh, Pivotal in discussing art, and you'll see that in uh, one of the last slides here, okay? So here we go. Let's, let's talk about uh, these items, okay? So we've got some new vocabulary uh, segments um, and a uh, ray, opposite rays uh, in the lens, okay? Uh, now, a line, of course, extends infinitely. A segment is not infinite. A segment has... A and what we call endpoints. So you might think of it as a piece of a line, a part of a line. So the endpoints name the segment. So, okay, this is segment AB or BA. It makes no difference as long as you uh, name the segment for its endpoints. And we used a little segment symbol over top as opposed to the line symbol we saw earlier. Okay? Now, unlike a line, we can measure how long is this segment, three inches, two inches, two centimeters, two miles, what is it, okay? And if it can be uh, measured, then of course we can cut it in half uh, or cut it in any way which we want and say that the two pieces add up into the whole segment. That's something we'll look at later called segment addition, okay? Uh, you can't say, oh, so where's the midpoint of this segment? Well, we could determine it and put a point there and call it C. But if I had a line, I say, where's the midpoint of the line? Well, you can't find the midpoint of a line because a line is infinite in length. So, uh, okay, so it can be measured. The ray, okay, if you think of uh, sun rays, they start at the sun and they keep going on forever. So that's exactly what a ray is. It starts at one point and moves in the direction of another point. So it does matter how you name rays because the... Uh, of course, we use the little ray symbol over top, and uh, the first point, the first letter names the end point, the, the second letter names the direction point. Okay, I'm sorry about this, keep slipping ahead. Here we go. So this is ray AB. Uh, it is not ray BA. BA would point in the opposite direction. If we take two rays that point in the opposite direction, opposite direction, then they in fact are a line. So uh, opposite rays is just another name we give uh, for a line, okay? So uh, two collinear rays, as it's stated here, so sharing all points on the same line is, of course, what we mean by collinear. Now we get to this page. So, so of course, we have parallels. Uh, we could have parallel lines, okay? Uh, and, of course, parallel means that they are always at the same distance from each other and they never do intersect. And, again, we said in this opening image that we have parallel lines represented by the bars here, um, and if we uh, if we want to think of it, uh, if you took um, some kind of material and rested it on the top bar here, then then you'd have parallel planes between material across the top and the and the base here. Okay, so that's and again, we we have a distortion because we have three dimensions represented in two dimensions. But parallels, there's a symbol for parallels, okay? If I wanted to uh, talk about the lines which were parallel, okay, then, uh, of course, I would use the line symbol. Uh, it, th as depicted here, these are the segments, so I would just say that the segments are parallel. But even if I only showed the, the segments, I could still say the lines because the lines containing those segments are equally as parallel. So uh, there is our nature of parallel lines, parallel segments. Um, now, uh, if you have two lines that are in a plane, okay, they can be of one of two things. Either they're going to be uh, parallel or they're going to be intersecting. And if the lines intersect, they intersect at one point. 
Now, we also have a condition called skew lines. And again, um, these are kind of um, just images of what we would think of in skew lines. So, so you want to imagine in three dimensions this uh, uh, this nut and bolt, or what we call the the, uh, the nut right here. Okay, uh, it goes onto a bolt. If you take the edges of that, okay, then you could say, well, here's the line that passes that contains one of the edge, and here's the line that contains one of the other edges of that bolt. Now, they're not parallel, nor do they meet, and nor are they in the same plane. So they're what we call skew lines, okay? They're what we call skew lines. Uh, if we look at this box over here, okay? And again, you've got to envision this in three dimensions, okay? So if we took a line that contained the edge AB and the line that contained EF, we would have to say that they were skew lines because they do not intersect. They do not uh, lie in the same plane, and they are not parallel. Uh, likewise, like this line containing CD would be um, uh, skew with either uh, EF or AB. Okay? So the conditions that we have of parallel uh, are also conditions which exist for planes. Uh, we do not have a condition of skew for planes. So let's talk about parallel planes. Of course, if we look at this um, kind of modern desk, we would say all the surfaces uh, that are right on surfaces are parallel to each other. So they're parallel to the floor, and they're all parallel. So, so the, the planes that contain those surfaces would be parallel. If we took this uh, pyramid and we chopped off the top of it, Okay, uh, with a plane, then uh, we would get the base of it looking sm s smaller, which we would uh, end up calling similar. But we did that by passing a plane through that was parallel to the base. Okay, uh, this is a um, image that comes uh, uh, usually from um, engineering in, in terms of um, projection on televisions and something they talk about aspect ratio they're showing you parallel planes here parallel planes in the projection okay uh, so here again we have this image we want you to imagine this in three dimensions a box uh, the room you're in presently perhaps identify where where uh, the corners of the rooms are and they would be the, the points a b c and d okay and find three sets of parallel lines, okay, so it doesn't have to be up to you, but I would say what's parallel to CG? Well, DH and AE and DF are all parallel, okay, uh, as well as any number of others, you know, AB and, uh, and EF. And find three pairs, uh, and find three pairs of skew lines. Well, okay, again, skew is non-parallel and non-intersecting, and not in the same plane. So CG uh, is skew with AD. That'll work, right? Uh, BC is skew with AB. And you can find some more, okay? Um, find three pair of lines that are neither parallel or skew. Well, if they're not parallel, they're not skew, then they must be intersecting, okay? So you certainly should be able to name three pairs of intersecting lines, because all the lines represented would, you know, any two would intersect at any one of these points, A, B, and three each. Name three pairs of parallel planes. So again, imagining this in three dimensions, you have, and, and if this is the room which you're presently in, then one of the walls would be represented by uh, the, the A, D, C, B plane, okay? The ceiling might be represented by the plane containing A, D, H, E. Now, really, when we're naming a plane, we really only need to use three letters because it's three non-collinear points that define a plane. So A, D, H would be the same plane as, you know, A, D, H, E. So you kind of trace it out when you name it. Uh, no problem with naming it with uh, four letters, but... Uh, you've got to be able to envision the plane with, with three letters, mainly, okay? 
So pairs of parallel la planes, again, would be like, a, again, if this were a room, the floor and the ceiling, front wall and back wall, and just name the planes that contain them, okay? Here's some questions for you to uh, ponder, okay, uh, in terms of true or false. The parallel bars is the symbol for parallel, parallel, okay? Uh, so we're asking here, are the planes parallel? And uh, so you have to understand what these points are. So the, the, let's go through one or two of them. Is plane that contains RBC, RBC is this front part of this uh, a house uh, type configuration, okay? So RBC is this reddish plane that we're looking at here, it's uh, the front pentagon, okay? Is that parallel with QGF? And QGF is the back uh, face of this house uh, shape, okay? So yes, they are parallel. Here's your uh, statement for um, perpendicular, meaning uh, meeting at right angles, okay? So you might ask, uh, is the plane containing F, R, and E, which would be maybe this side of this house shape, Okay, here in yellow, is that perpendicular to QED, which is the floor? Yes, they are perpendicular because they meet at apparent right angles and they meet at a line, which is the line Q, uh, QE. And that's what this one is asking. This symbol is for intersection, which is asking, do the plane contain, does the plane RCD, the plane containing those three points, RCD, you got to envision where RCD is, RC. D, which is the front part of this house shape, okay, does that plane intersect with QED, which is basically the floor, at this line ED, or segment ED? Yes, it does. These are questions we looked at earlier, okay, in terms of collinear, uh, lying in the same line, coplanar, lying in the same plane, okay? Uh, and here's this, um, as we alluded to earlier, the vanishing point, okay? So this is something that is, uh, uh, until Renaissance art came along, if you take a look, you won't see a perception in the art because uh, you won't identify a vanishing point. So the vanishing point is effectively what allows you to create a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional surface. When you're drawing on a piece of paper, that's two-dimensional. That's a plane, okay? So there we're depicting anything that are parallel. We kind of can draw a line through all figures that are parallel, and they will appear to intersect at a vanishing point. So that's the, uh, the nature of what we call the vanishing point that is used by uh, artists uh, and was not used by artists prior to the uh, previous to the uh, uh, Renaissance period. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that interesting.